Ladies and gentlemen, almost 120 million people cast their votes in the first phase of the general election for 2024 held on April 19th. A similar number of north of 120 million are set to cast their votes on the 26th. I want you to imagine the scale of that number and the length and breadth of the geography it encompasses. In the entire country, in the entire country, even places which have seen ugliness in the past, places in Chhattisgarh, places uh, in Madhya Pradesh, have seen a democratic right exercised in a peaceful environment. To the credit of the Manipuris, they came as they always have to exercise their democratic right and mandate in large numbers, recording a turnout of more than 72%. Three out of four eligible to vote came out to stand in line and cast their vote. What has happened subsequently is an assault on India's democracy. We've seen an assault on the Indian state, and now we've seen voting booths vandalized, EVMs burnt, and at least in 11 polling booths, the election commission has had to call for a repoll. The situation is simple. It is the duty of the state, our country, to ensure law and order and peace and stability. That is the principal reason, the cornerstone of foundation that a state exists. In the creation of a sovereign state, we give up, we give up the prerogative of ourselves deciding law and order and we hand it in power to the state for it to preserve it under the rules put together over many decades. This crisis has been going on for more than a year. It is inconceivable to think that this is just a tribal issue. It can't be, it can no longer be considered to be. A malefied attempt is being made to destabilize an important state in the country, to terrorize its people, to deny them their democratic rights. And there is, in all of this, a realization that this cannot be out of sight, out of mind. It needs to be front and center. That is our duty to the people of Manipur, many of whom not, will not just be inconvenienced by a repoll, many of whom will be fearful after what has happened, not only in the past couple of days, but in the past several months. Let's open up this conversation to figure out what the solution is, because surely uh, there is one available to us. Uh, joining us on the broadcast, Major General Sudhakar Ji is with us. BL Vora is with us. Major Kongsai joining us on the broadcast. He's of the Cookie Welfare Association in Manipur. Lady Wife joining us. She's a cookie activist. And Narendra Deb joining us to help us understand he's a senior journalist. Narendra Ji, let me start with you, okay? What has been happening during the polling cycle that requires our attention at the national level, sir? Uh, to start with, uh, you have started with a good introduction. But I would like to add, Election Commission had planned it properly, actually. To put uh, Outer Manipur in two phases of polling was good, good planning because, and it is also unprecedented. Probably uh, never in the past, at least in the region, we had uh, two polling dates for say, parliamentary seat. Normally it is not done, but because it is an extraordinary situation, Election Commission rightly took the decision. And uh, I will still give the credit to the Election Commission and Indian Democratic Spirit, the law enforcing agencies in the state, and the people of the state, because probably the worst is gone. We had apprehension of much violence on the first day of polling. Something happened, of course. Uh, uh, some EBMs were destroyed, some gunfire took place. But generally, I find... Uh, Election Commission has done a good job on the first day, and now everything has been ordered in some segment. 
and of course uh, on april 6 manipur will have uh, outer manipur will have the second phase of polling yes so uh, uh, what is, Mr. Dev is telling you that this is unprecedented. Never before in Manipur, or let alone elsewhere, that a constituency has gone, a single constituency for a single parliamentary seat is voting in two separate phases under unprecedented security deployment. Now, unprecedented does not mean foolproof, but it needs to be foolproof. So let's get a perspective here on what is going wrong. Major Kongsai, Surely, at this point of time, we can't be saying that this is just a tribal dispute that has just gotten out of hand. Uh, Gulati, uh, thank you so much for having me here. And uh, my salute and respect to all my uh, co-panelists. I want to be uh, frank and blunt uh, in this discussion. Please. Man uh, the government cannot hide uh, its failure in the process of elections. When you do, don't do your homework, when you don't recover, five thousands of, more than five thousands of weapons, and you know that all the weapons are in the hands of the militia, then how can you blame uh, the election commission? The situation in Manipur is definitely not conducive for free and fair elections. And not only that, even the prime ministers of India find it not conducive to visit Manipur as of now. And even the home ministers, uh, in his first visit, that was in uh, May last year, he promised that he will come back to the state after 15 days. But lo and behold, he went back just a few days before the election. That too, confined to Imphal only. Right now, to the attentions of the, all the audience and the people of India, no single cookie is in Imphal the state capital of Manipur. How can you expect a free and fair election there? People are homeless, people are displaced. That is one. And the, in the other side, as I said, the militia are armed by tangle. Almost, they are proud to be more, uh, crossing 40,000 in number. They are more or less every day paraded uh, openly in Imphal and nearby areas. They are proud to gather such huge force and the government is a witness to it. And how can the government imagine a free and fair elections with the existence of this level of armed militia, directly or indirectly having a cohort with the uh, government? I say once again, how can the government, how dare the government try to wash away or hide themselves in this uh, process of elections. Okay, all right, okay. I think you, you, Thank you so you, much. you've given, given yes. a picture. Of course, uh, I know that there is in part, in part, and I'm going to say in part with, with, a, with a lot of gravitas, long-standing tribal issues. For people who are, who've been following for the past one year, remember the, the, the Maitais are, are, are a majority uh, of the population in Manipur. They constitute about just over 50%. And uh, the Kukis and, and, and Nagas are another 30 to 40%. Uh, and uh, generally from, from the hill areas. And the issue, as you well know, has been going on uh, between these two primary tribal issues. And it's become ugly to the point of what has been uh, the description of nasty things taking place to the loss of life and liberty. There is uh, nobody representing here uh, the Metei point of view, there might be a, a legitimate point of view uh, that needs to be absorbed there also. But I'm trying to now take this conversation forward and to see what needs to get urgently done. Uh, Miss uh, Wi-Fi, please help us understand what is your reading of your situation? What's what's your understanding of what the, what the issue is? Understanding says that the state has no power. You rightly pointed out it is the duty of the state to keep law and order. The state of Manipur 
and the head of the state, all of them are powerless. And this violence that we're talking about is not only on election day. This is a day-to-day -day affair in the Valley of Imphal. If you look at the Petrol Pump Association, they also have uh, come up strongly that extortion is in the highest form. In other fields also, be it a small businessman or anything, any day-to-day -day life, extortion, you know, capturing by force, capturing by gun, by the so-called Arambai, is a day-to-day -day affair. Let's not forget that. And then the state that has gone through this amount of violence, thousands of people are displaced. You know, my, I wonder, what is so important in this election? Grabbing power is more important? Neglecting the common people? Only last night, the inter, uh, internally displaced people home in three villages were blown away by strong wind. We're not bothered about that. We only bother about election, election, election. How desperate is the, 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 the state government in grabbing power once again? And also 11 polling booth to be repolled because EVM are uh, destroyed and it is captured by force. This shows the other side of the state, which is lawless and powerless. And another thing that I want to point it out, that we even move Supreme Court for internally displaced people to cast their vote. But they were turned down. This shows that only a certain section of people are allowed to exercise their rights as a citizen of this country. It is also a very um, difficult situation, not only for Manipur, for the entire country, because nobody cares about Manipur in the sense like one year of violence. And still, even the election commission going ahead with the election. I, I really uh, blow my mind that how on earth you expect a free and fair election if okay. the state has no, uh, no, you know, if the state has, a, uh, even if a very peaceful state, when it comes to election, it's, it's difficult to control. But a state like Manipur expecting then, that is a big question for me, that a state has no power, the head of the state has no power. We have seen Kangla Fort incident. I don't have to repeat again. Okay. And Let now okay. repolling also, is that a solution, repolling? Do we, ex uh, well, can, can, uh, I, yeah. I, I, we wish we had the ideal solutions, ma'am. Uh, they're, they're not here, but, uh, uh, but it requires the seriousness of examination, which is why we are indeed here. Let me get Mr. Vora into this conversation. Mr. Vora, we can't describe the situation as life as normal. Something as extraordinary is taking place. And I just mentioned 120 million votes have been cast in a single day just a couple of days ago. This is the only place in the country where we've seen that due to violence, attacks, that re-polling has had to be ordered. How do you assess what is happening? Uh, Rishabh, uh, you have said very rightly, it's unfortunate that this has happened in Manipur. But I think confining ourselves to discussion about this re-polling issue itself, hmm. I think it has nothing to do with cookie Maiti dispute at all. Valley, it's had only they have Maithis, and it happened in the Maithis area, Maithi majority area. Now, my take is that these are the political vested interests who are responsible for this booth capturing and destruction of EVMs. You recall that we used to have booth capturing in Bihar. You remember in the good yes. old days, many of the places also. Those days are gone from elsewhere, but here they haven't gone. So my feeling is that they have some kind of a political backing from one party or the other. Maybe the party was losing. They have done it. I don't know really. I mean, these are all just conjectures. Having said that, yes, to some extent, the state did fail in maintaining law and order. They should have ensured that these things don't happen with so many people moving around with guns in the valley and, of course, outside which is not relevant to this particular point. Mm. So I think that a lot of care should have been taken. I think it has been taken also. By and large, it has it has gone off well. 11 polling stations, not a, honestly, if you ask me by number, it's not a big deal. But still, yes, there has been a failure. And I think Election Commission acted promptly in reordering, though the one party asked for re-polling in 47 polling stations, but they ordered only in 11. Hmm. And I think it will go, it will go off well. Okay. That's what my hope okay. is. Okay, so Mr. Mr. Vora, obviously uh, the, the situation is beyond just complex. There are internal 
uh, actors, yes, there might definitely. be external actors. I keep wondering where the weaponry is coming from, where the training is coming from. I, I, you know, I, it, one, one keeps wondering these, these things for sure. But what our answer cannot be to the people in Manipur that, listen, the rest of the country is currently busy with elections for the next couple of months. So we can't really do much. Surely that can't be something. We need to figure out, if we haven't already in the past one year, some plan of action, some work in progress. Uh, is that readily available? Do we see a plan of action ahead of us? I think this is where there's a failure. Actually, it should have been anticipated. Those people who are moving around with guns and violence having a lot of support, some preventive action should have been taken. Leaders and some others should have been put behind the bars. And I think the violence being expected at the you know sensitive police stations, when we work in the police during election time, polling stations are categorized into very sensitive, sensitive, this, that, and all. I'm sure the exercise would have been done, but perhaps not that diligently. But, uh, well, okay. I think they have learned a lesson. I hope they have learned a lesson. Yes. And those responsible for this, now the next point is, they should be definitely taken to task as per law. Okay. They but but in the end, there are, there, there are bottom lines. And yes. the bottom lines is, is just exacerbated, uh, General Sudhakar, the conversation now we've had for the better part of a year. Surely, now, if we tell a person residing in or from Manipur that we haven't been able to come up with a plan in a year, isn't going to sound reassuring. We need some sort of reassurance at this point of time, not only in thought, but also in action. What can we provide? Uh, Risham, firstly, uh, good morning from my side. Good evening to all the Indians and the viewers. Uh, uh, there is, uh, my heart uh, doesn't have the right to say no to a request coming at midnight in the west coast of Pacific. That too, on Rishabh's name. And appreciate it, sir. Really. Appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> uh, well, compliments to all the previous co-panelists. I tend to acknowledge and endorse everyone's point of view, particularly my dear sister, Gladi. I dare not say anything that's <laughs> opposing her co <laughs> comments. And... Uh, and we have a military man also giving his point of view. I totally agree with you, Rishabh. The point that you have placed on the table today for deliberation is that, that the hallmark of any security apparatus or administration lies in anticipating the troubles. If they have not been able to do and address the situation, a democracy on one hand, we claim ourselves to be the mother of democracy and the largest democracy in the world. The other hand, we have not been able to address these pitfalls. It's a very irony paradox of reality on one hand. The other hand, I would say something is better than nothing. I'm trying to, you know, think out of the box, look at the glasses, not as half empty, but half full with water and half full with air. Let's see if and have the trust in the election commission. The election commission has actually, you know, bounced back with a responsive mechanism has been able to identify out of 47, 11 have been identified as brought out by us, 12 DGP Saab, Bora Saab, and they are taking action in earnest. But that is not enough, Rishav. I personally feel that we need, we should have as a nation done much more than what we have done for So, so that's the question. Now, there can but, be two strategies, uh, General. One, of course, is that time heals all wounds, that you need to give it time. It's not a quick fix. It can't be done in a, in, in, in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, commission need to set, be set. And a lot of effort has gone. Uh, initially, yes, it was, it was the Home Minister who was there. He wasn't there for a few hours. He was there for several days. But the principal point as we sit today, that we cannot tell the people of Manipur, hang on for a couple of months while the country is busy uh, with general elections. Uh, and if you, if you are afraid and your, and your lifestyle and livelihood is interrupted, nor can we say that one year is not a long enough time for, for, for basic security and rehabilitation to be done. So what do we now do? Uh, Rishabh, uh, if this question is meant for me, well, uh, I would like to respond by saying uh, that uh, a problem of this nature in Manipur, let's not look at it in isolation. There are many such things which are happening where the dots have to be joined. There is a bigger plan, bigger design in place. And while saying that, let not divert the attention of the audience to the bigger design. I am only addressing the core issue. What should we do in Manipur? Because the external issues, by and by, 
are gradually being addressed. Whether you talk about the fencing, that itself is come under a big question mm. uh, along the border. Uh, the situation in Myanmar, the situation, I don't want to disclose certain things which I came to know from one of my NDC batchmates here in USA. Uh, it will unnecessarily lead us to controversy that that the military junta, the Tatmado, so far under the perception of being a pro-Myanmar force, uh, has gone against the Myanmar force, actually. And the pro-democratic uh, parties are in favor now. So it's a, we'll not discuss about it. But the core issue, I would say, internally speaking, we need to actually isolate the area, first of all, and identify the trouble spots, one. Number two, we need to sanitize. What uh, Major Kangshai has brought out, you cannot have elections with 5,000. He's talking about 5,000. I have a figure of 8,800. Anyway, the, any weapon system in any kind of a civil society it does not contribute to healthy and stable law and order situation. Okay. So therefore, we need to actually carry out to demobilization and disarming of all these weapon systems. Third and most important point is the sanitization itself has to be done with the rules in position. But today, the rule position doesn't allow Whatever area, like 10% area is being occupied by 52-53% okay. of population. So after having done all this, we need to actually look at our uh, our complete process okay, of Okay, so because, because the impact of the off and the consequence of this is extremely complex. Would the people of Manipur have preferred that the elections are deferred? Therefore, the right to have democratic redress is put off. That's an unhappy situation, while at the same time you heard the argument that in elections at a time when there are internally displaced people perhaps not able to cast their mandate, despite the fact that three out of four did come up to the polling booth, then you can argue who were the one out of the four that were unable to or unwilling to. So let me just understand, Mr. Deb, what are the two, three immediate priorities that you see that need to happen quickly, regardless of whether we are busy with elections or not? Uh, see, uh uh, the 72 percent turnout is something creditable, and the credit for this goes to the people of the state. Uh, if you ask me frankly, I did not expect this kind of turnout this year, especially in the context of the violence we had last year. So, people of Manipur are showing faith in democratic system, and this should be appreciated and understood by New Delhi. See, New Delhi has a tradition of having ivory tower experts. This did not happen today. It is happening since 1947. Uh, some, someone sits in some blocks, and this has been 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, we have seen. So they sit and they decide that this has happened, and they will pass some ivory tower expertise about the North East. Mm. But problem in North East or Manipur, what we have seen, is much more than complex. This issue has been uh, pointed out rightly by uh, almost all the panelists and also by the host. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, North East has seen this kind of problems earlier also. There used to be states or constituencies where elections were not held. Elections would be held after the general election. Even in 1984, the election... Uh, Congress owned with a massive mandate, 400 plus, and they are proud of that. Assam did not have elections with the nation that that year. It had the election in 1985, not 84. Yes, correct. After the election. So, uh, but uh, central government decision and uh, Manipur government decision and also okay. the election commission allowing elections in Manipur is also appreciable. Yes. Because it is showing... I, I, uh, New Delhi's new I, I agree, sir. It, it, of course, it cuts both ways. So good the elections have happened, but at the same time, an yes. argument is made the environment. But you can say that there's three out of four but came see, out to vote, and that says a lot. So it is, it's not, it. it's not a simple solution. Not certainly we can, we're going to solve. But it requires a little bit of attention and energy. Uh, and like I said, it cannot be deferred for a couple of months because we're talking about people's lives and livelihoods at this point of time. Major Kongsai, what are then your two or three urgent priorities that you'd like to see happen in the interim period while, of course, we figure out what the synergy required is to come up with a lasting, lasting peace? The first and foremost, uh, I think, 
uh, will agree with me. Every uh, clear thinking citizen of India will agree with me that the first and foremost is neutral force should look into Manipur very closely. In, if we talk that in terms of the democratic term, president rule should be imposed as early as possible and the law and order should be looked after by the center. And here, two groups of peoples are in having a conflict and the law and order is a look after by one group of people okay the the what do you call it the in that way uh, even if one try to be neutral uh, the other will look always suspicious. okay so you are struggling with so the neutrality in, way, in local be, forces so you would like to see uh, you are saying president's rule but the center take full charge of security operations you can argue that the center is already in charge of or the large percentage of the security office of operations with the armed forces but in the policing and others these have been long long uh, consistent issues of the past one year as well let me uh, uh, get a good perspective from uh, ms wifi also uh, uh, ms wifi what then are the two or three immediate priorities for you immediate priority Priority. If you look at the two, uh, um, the inner and the outer Manipur election, um, the outer Manipur election is very, very peaceful. So the trouble uh, happened only in the valley. That is in Meite all along are troublemaker. They keep saying kuki kuki. Now the kuku were victim. Now the Meite themselves are victim. If you look at even one of the candidates, uh, he said that, uh, you know, the attack and the nonsense and the violence did not start by kuki. They themselves. So I'm talking even for the Meite point of view. That until and unless you curtail this arm by movement, until and unless you disarm them, the state will never uh, have peace. Okay, I don't want because, to make because, I, I don't want to make broad, yes. broad I don't want to make broad sweeping assumptions. Okay, okay. Uh, Seventy five percent of the people have come out and vote. It's a very small, literally maybe a few thousand people who are creating all the troubles that we've seen for the past one year. Uh, let me okay, Mr. Bora. What then are the two or three things to do? Uh, General Sudhakar has talked about you have to isolate the issue. Uh, so we have to remove any externalities that might be involved. Then, of course, we have to de-weaponize, disarm. What next? Mr. Vora. No. Uh, Rishad, the point is that now since we are talking of the larger issue broadly, yes, yes there has been a failure, political failure. I have seen Northeast, I have served in the Northeast, and I am seeing Northeast for over half a century by now. See, politically and economically, it was always neglected. Now, economically, things are better. But politically, even now, there's not much of a focus, frankly, because politically, they're not very strong. These smaller states have just one or two MPs, and that doesn't really matter to the you know, arithmetic at the center. That is the, the reason. Now, among the northeastern states, Manipur is the most complicated in terms of population composition and has Myanmar border also. Now, here, I think there has been a political failure all through the last one year and no corrective action has honestly been taken so far. The seriousness with which it should have been tackled has not been done so far. I entirely agree with you. Election, I think, by and large, has gone off well. It will go off well now. Because now mostly the thing is done, only half the constituency outer remains. Okay. And on 26th April, they'll have it. But I think, yes, we can't wait for the elections. I think the more attention needs to be paid. And that has not been the case. Okay. And some hard political decisions are yeah, made. Some, yeah, some, yeah, some, some hard decisions have to be made now. That's that's that period. General Sudhakar, because the premise cannot be, we cannot be telling the people of Manipur, both living within the state and without the state, many, uh, of course, are living in other parts of the country, and tell them, listen, uh, one year has passed, uh, and uh, and sorry we couldn't figure out anything, uh, and uh, elections are on, so you'll have to wait a couple of months. That can't be the answer. So what what is a pathway that needs to be put together now? Uh, Deshab, uh, very quick response from my side. We need to identify the correct problem because when our colleagues from uh, cookie-dominated uh, tribe, they make a point, they have a point. I have been all through and through saying both have points. But to address the point, we need to understand the core issue. The core issue can be addressed by dividing solutions into short-term, medium-term and long-term. 
there are some issues which need to be addressed in short term basis mm. some issues which need to be addressed in medium term basis some issues to be long term the lasting solution that you have been in your narrative and uh, epilogue you have been giving i personally feel having operated extensively in assam and other states to the best of my knowledge and understanding manipur is only one of the states in northeast which is deprived of a particular clause if i remember correctly i think it is article 6 if i am uh, that uh, special schedule 6 which entitles them to a provision of a autonomous district or a kind of a <coughs> body as has been found by borderland why yes. don't you think in terms of those kind of things give liberalize the concept <coughs> consider it as a long term perspective address the aspiration okay. second and most important is the mid term that we are talking about mm-hmm. and the short term isolating the area and thereafter i tend to agree with the major kangshang if there is a requirement of a neutral force so be it i think it has been done last but not the least let's not be unforbid uh, 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 ignore the aspect that the present dispensation sitting in the center is closing its eye and turning a blind eye to the whole thing i have been told and assured by very close friends of my uh, service uh, generals uh, serving and also retired generals that the issue is being tackled but i have contested the issue yes that it is not enough okay Manipur so so, so, no, so i i know for a state. fact i know for a fact that there is no blind eye and i know for a fact i can't state on television because something called off the record uh, but i know for a fact that work is on on what exactly the identification of the problems are uh, what is the step by step plan is being done but even knowing for a fact is not the reassurance for the people doesn't make a difference what you what you argue on which side or which which which, which tribal loyalty uh, one can possibly have in the end you have to be able to conduct your life and livelihood go to school go to work run your shops live in your house get your food get your water get your ration the same way anybody else in the country is doing i finish work and i get a chance to go home i don't have to worry about uh, 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 being uh, being put in a camp somewhere uh, because violence has been taking place for the past past one year so that has to be it so sometimes work has to happen sometimes it needs to be seen to be happening as well and these conversation need to happen uh, need to happen uh, so we'll continue them here for the principal premise that it can't be an out of sight out of mind issue while uh, we say that we are busy with elections uh, in other parts of the country and political high stakes are important and manipur has only got two seats that can't for sure be an answer i thank my guests for joining and putting your perspectives i know there are several other perspectives that we need to take we will take we'll have these conversations again as we've had them in the past for now we take a break see you in a minute for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon